a 45-year-old patient with a traumatic brain injury is admitted to the intensive care unit. The nurse notes that the patient's intracranial pressure is elevated. The nurse understands that an elevated ICP can lead to which of the following complications? A. Hypotension B. Bradycardia C. Hypertension D. Tachycardia The correct answer is B. Bradycardia Explanation Elevated ICP can cause compression of the brainstem, which can lead to disruption of the autonomic nervous system. The disruption can result in vagal stimulation, leading to a decrease in heart rate, resulting in bradycardia. Hypotension is less likely because the increased ICP may lead to increased blood pressure. Tachycardia is not a typical response to increased ICP. A 32-year-old patient with a brain tumor is scheduled for a craniotomy. The nurse is preparing the patient for surgery and understands that a priority intervention to prevent complications related to elevated ICP is a. Administering analgesics for pain control. b. Keeping the patient in a high Fowler's position. c. Providing a dark and quiet environment. d. Assisting with relaxation techniques. The correct answer is b. Keeping the patient in a high Fowler's position. Explanation Keeping the patient in a high Fowler's position, head of the bed elevated 30 to 45 degrees, helps promote venous drainage from the head, reducing venous congestion and lowering ICP. Administering analgesics for pain control is important but does not directly address elevated ICP. Providing a dark and quiet environment and assisting with relaxation techniques are measures to reduce stimulation and promote comfort, but they do not directly affect ICP. A 65-year-old patient with a history of hypertension is admitted to the emergency department with sudden-onset right-sided weakness and slurred speech. The nurse suspects a stroke and begins the initial assessment. Which assessment finding is the most indicative of an ischemic stroke? A. Sudden severe headache. B. Rapidly improving neurological deficits. C. Unilateral facial droop. D. Decreased level of consciousness. The correct answer is, C, unilateral facial droop. Explanation, unilateral facial droop is a classic sign of an ischemic stroke. It is caused by the weakness or paralysis of muscles on one side of the face due to the disruption of blood flow to the affected area of the brain. A sudden severe headache may be present in a hemorrhagic stroke, but it is not a typical symptom of an ischemic stroke. Rapidly improving neurological deficits and decreased level of consciousness are not indicative of an ischemic stroke. A 72-year-old patient is admitted to the stroke unit with a diagnosis of ischemic stroke. The nurse is monitoring the patient closely for complications and understands that the most common early complication of an ischemic stroke is a cerebral edema, b. aspiration pneumonia, c. seizures, d hemorrhagic transformation. The correct answer is, B, aspiration pneumonia. Explanation, aspiration pneumonia is the most common early complication of an ischemic stroke. The weakened swallowing reflex and impaired gag reflex in stroke patients increase the risk of food or fluids entering the airway, leading to aspiration pneumonia. Cerebral edema is a potential complication but typically occurs later. Seizures and hemorrhagic transformation can occur but are less common early complications compared to aspiration pneumonia. A 58-year-old patient is admitted to the stroke unit with a diagnosis of hemorrhagic stroke. The nurse is assessing the patient for signs of increased intracranial pressure, ICP. Which finding is an early sign of increased ICP? A. Dilated pupils. B. Hypotension. C. Bradycardia. D. Headache. The correct answer is, D. Headache. Explanation, headache is an early sign of increased intracranial pressure, ICP, in patients with a hemorrhagic stroke. It occurs due to the stretching and irritation of the meninges and blood vessels. Dilated pupils, hypotension, and bradycardia are more commonly associated with herniation and advanced stages of increased ICP. While these signs may be present in some patients with increased ICP, headache is typically one of the earliest and most common manifestations. 6. 
a 42-year-old patient is scheduled to undergo a craniotomy for the resection of a brain tumor. The nurse is providing preoperative education and instructs the patient about the importance of avoiding activities that increase intracranial pressure ICP. The nurse explains that the following activity should be avoided, a. Deep breathing exercises. b. Coughing forcefully. c. Performing gentle neck stretches. d. Taking slow, controlled walks. The correct answer is, b. Coughing forcefully. Explanation Forceful coughing increases intrathoracic pressure, which can lead to increased intracranial pressure, ICP, due to the transmission of pressure through the cerebrospinal fluid. Deep breathing exercises, gentle neck stretches, and slow, controlled walks are generally encouraged to promote lung expansion, maintain mobility, and prevent complications such as atelectasis and deep vein thrombosis. However, activities that involve forceful coughing should be avoided to minimize the risk of increased ICP and potential complications after craniotomy. A 58-year-old patient is recovering from a craniotomy for the removal of an intracranial hematoma. The nurse is assessing the patient's neurological status and understands that the earliest and most sensitive indicator of a change in neurological status following a craniotomy is a. Decreased level of consciousness. b. Pupil changes. c. Altered motor function. d. Changes in vital signs. The correct answer is b. Pupil changes. Explanation Pupil changes, such as unequal size or reactivity, are the earliest and most sensitive indicators of a change in neurological status after a craniotomy. Pupillary responses are controlled by the cranial nerves and are highly sensitive to alterations in brain function. Decreased level of consciousness, altered motor function, and changes in vital signs may occur later in the progression of neurological changes. However, Pupil changes can provide immediate indications of potential complications, such as increased intracranial pressure or changes in brain perfusion. A 32-year-old female patient presents to the clinic complaining of recurrent severe headaches accompanied by nausea, photophobia, and phonophobia. The patient describes the headache as throbbing in nature and typically lasting for several hours. The nurse suspects a migraine headache and anticipates that the most appropriate first-line pharmacological treatment for this patient would be a. acetaminophen, Tylenol, b. ibuprofen, Advil, c. sumatriptan, Imitrex, d. propranolol, Indorol. The correct answer is c. sumatriptan, Imitrex. Explanation Sumatriptan, Imitrex, is a specific serotonin receptor agonist, triptan, commonly used as a first-line pharmacological treatment for migraines. It helps relieve pain, photophobia, phonophobia, and associated symptoms by constricting the cranial blood vessels and inhibiting the release of inflammatory neuropeptides. Acetaminophen and ibuprofen may be used for mild to moderate headaches but are not as effective for migraines. Propranolol, a beta-blocker, is used as a prophylactic treatment to prevent migraines rather than for immediate relief. A 45-year-old male patient with a history of migraines is seeking guidance on identifying and managing triggers for his headaches. The nurse provides education about common triggers for migraines and emphasizes that the most important factor in trigger management is a. Eliminating all potential triggers. b. Avoiding stress and relaxation techniques. c. Maintaining a consistent sleep schedule. D. Identifying and avoiding personal triggers. The correct answer is D. Identifying and avoiding personal triggers. Explanation Migraine triggers can vary among individuals, and it is essential for patients to identify and avoid their personal triggers. While it may be beneficial to eliminate or minimize general triggers, such as stress, irregular sleep patterns, or certain foods, the most effective approach involves understanding specific triggers that consistently lead to migraines in that individual. By identifying and avoiding personal triggers, patients can better manage their migraines and reduce the frequency and severity of headache episodes. Simply eliminating all potential triggers may be impractical and unnecessary, as some triggers may not have a significant impact on every individual. 10. 
a 50-year-old patient with a severe head injury is receiving intracranial pressure ICP, monitoring. The nurse notices that the ICP waveform demonstrates an abnormal pattern with increased amplitude and decreased compliance. The nurse recognizes this waveform pattern is a. A normal finding. B. Cushing's triad. C. A Monroe Kelly violation. D. Brain herniation. The correct answer is D. Brain herniation. Explanation An abnormal ICP waveform pattern characterized by increased amplitude and decreased compliance is indicative of brain herniation. Brain herniation is a life-threatening condition where increased pressure inside the skull causes brain tissue to shift and compress other structures, leading to neurological deficits. Cushing's triad is characterized by hypertension, bradycardia, and irregular respirations, which can occur in response to increased ICP but is not specific to the waveform pattern described. A Monroe Kelly violation refers to an imbalance between the volumes of brain tissue, cerebrospinal fluid, and blood inside the skull, which can lead to increased ICP, but it does not specifically describe the waveform pattern. Review A 45-year-old patient with a traumatic brain injury is admitted to the intensive care unit. The nurse notes that the patient's intracranial pressure is elevated. The nurse understands that an elevated ICP can lead to which of the following complications? A. Hypotension B. Bradycardia C. Hypertension D. Tachycardia The correct answer is B. Bradycardia Explanation Elevated ICP can cause compression of the brainstem, which can lead to disruption of the autonomic nervous system. The disruption can result in vagal stimulation, leading to a decrease in heart rate, resulting in bradycardia. Hypotension is less likely because the increased ICP may lead to increased blood pressure. Tachycardia is not a typical response to increased ICP.